everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to another episode of VO Buzz Weekly. Are you guys ready for more DC Douglas? I am. Let's do it. Let's hit a few more uh, of your fan questions there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right, here we go. Um, okay. We're going to get deep. Um, this is, comes from either Hart or Wart or Hort. Um, I think the W might be silent. Yeah. Do you feel your political life hindered your career or do you feel it opened new doors? Um, and I'm going to say, I think that it opened new doors. I don't think it hindered my career. We, 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 we need well, you have to give the backstory, backstory because yes. it, it right. may have opened... What does the voiceover guy have to do with political? It may have opened different doors you didn't anticipate. Right, right. Yes. This is actually a fascinating question because a lot of voiceover people are going, they, you know, we have different clients, we have corporate clients and things like that, and we think that we should just keep our personal opinions as to ourselves mm -hmm. so that they don't know about it and, and whatnot. And I, but Which I felt this way too. I Well, no, but I did. For the longest time on my blog, I did not write about anything political. I tried to be nice about everybody and everything mm -hmm. um, but in my personal life and I didn't consider myself to be a public figure I'm a voiceover uh, well I'm known for voiceover stuff which means that I'm not known <laughs> yeah he's faceless <laughs> I'm a faceless guy right it's not like on camera I had some show going or whatever anyway um the, uh, but also I will say that I felt like my blog was kind of insincere in the way that I wrote it because I was never fully honest and fully myself mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And to be a good writer, you really should be fully embodied about with everything that you are. Which now he is. Um, yes. So what happened was is that uh, I have a habit, um, <laughs> not anymore, but I used to have a habit that when I saw th oppressive organizations doing things to other people that upset me, that I would like to find the phone number and call them and say, I think that you guys are... <laughs> And um, I did it to Fred Phelps' family. Actually, I had talked to his wife on the phone for 20 minutes one time. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's like, it, it, they get to me. And, and look up yes. the, the Fred Phelps and you'll know what I'm talking Very about. Very passionate you um, are. Yes, well, yes. and he deserved it. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, um, during the healthcare debate of 2010, um, the, uh, uh, listen, I'm all for healthy debate and if you don't want healthcare in the country and all that, I'm all for all of that. But there are, there, there, of the, of the Tea Party, there was an AstroTurf portion of it, which was headed by Freedom Works. And they're the ones that bust in all the people that were, that were going crazy calling Barney Frank a, a, a derogatory word for sexuality, which was the thing that got me. Um, and Barney Frank's the kind of guy that just says it like it is. He doesn't, li he doesn't lie about that kind of thing. He just says, yeah, they didn't. He didn't care either. But it got me because, you know, that, that's just the thing. It's like whenever it's a minority or it's a small group of, it just whatever. Eh. Anyway. You want to help. I'm going to call him now. You're going to stand up for those. <laughs> Jamie, give so, me his phone. Give so me his phone. So anyway, so I, I called the group and I left them a message and I just asked them about the, <laughs> the ratio of uh, mentally retarded people that work for them. Something to that effect. Anyway, <laughs> this, um, uh, they decided to take it and run with it because they went to my Facebook page. Now, here is an example of great promotion. <laughs> I promoted myself so well. They my website, find you. Facebook, and Twitter. They found me and they went, he must be big time. Yeah, it was just the way I promoted myself. But they decided to go with it. He's big time. And then they waited. And then I posted that I got a gig, uh, I got a new Geico gig. I had already done the major campaigns, and those were actually done. This was a small internet campaign that I'd gotten. And they saw that. The president of the group posted on the Breitbart website about me and basically said, everybody call Geico and call him and harass them and get him fired, that kind of thing. And within a day, uh, Geico uh, decided that they were going to maybe go in a different direction with the voiceover. Mm. Totally understand why they did it. And I would have, right. if, mm -hmm. if I was in part they, of the yeah. head of that department, I would have said, you know what, let's just cut our losses and go. And and, um, but what I wasn't going to let go was Freedom Works getting away with it. So I decided to then come out of my shell and battle <laughs> back. And I put out the press release, and that caught fire. That it, it was what, like shooting a pea like out of a straw <laughs> over a mile, and and having it land in a thimble. And all of a sudden, I'm, the next morning, MSNBC wants to interview me. Fox wants to interview me. Joy it Bay was like Har, it was breaking news. It was like DC was like was like, uh, like what he the was like hell? On the, from the front page of every newspaper. It was it was, was not that bad. I know, God, but, I know. But I got it. It feels like that when you're in the middle of it, when yeah. you're like mm -hmm. a, you're at ground zero of the storm and you're handling yeah. it all, and you're like going, "Oh, what's the next press release?" Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, that was how it began. The way that I and, and I went to the inter I went on Geraldo. I kind of responded to all this stuff and whatnot, but I didn't feel like I closed the chapter properly. So a month later. Later, I what I called a tweaked nipple. I put out the uh, Tea Party PSA, which you can go to TeaPartyPSA.com to see it. Yes. And um, it was my response <laughs> to it, and that hit big. And so, like a month later, it was like, whoop, we're back, we're back into the ride again. We're in the rodeo, <laughs> and uh, that was fun. Um, and that's when I ended up going on Joey Behar's uh, mm -hmm. uh, CNN show and, and whatnot. And uh, but for that also brought me all these fans. So it opened new doors. It also brought me more work. I had like three clients of mine that said, "We'll never work with you again." 
blah, blah, blah. You should get out of Tinseltown and see what real people are like. Like, oh, so we're all fake over here? I have a mortgage. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I lost three, but I gained like probably like 20 in that, that week. The people going, we, we love that you came out and spoke your mind. Mm -hmm. And then I started to think, then I had a voiceover person actually ask me. Or no, she wrote a blog post and, I, and sent it to me and I read it. Um, I forget her name, I'm sorry. But she wrote a very thoughtful blog post about um, what is our duty as a, as a, as a VO artist? Yeah, are, exactly. are we to keep our opinions to ourselves so that we are considered a, a, a clean voice yeah. that can be used for whatever the thing is? Well, now here's the thing. You know, there. this now bleeds into another subject. Oh, my God, I could go on forever about this stuff. But another subject of, of, of political commercials. I do a lot of political commercials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I get paid for. I'm multipartisan. I don't, you know, you want a Ron Paul ad, I'll do a Ron Paul ad. You want a Romney ad, I'll do a Romney ad. I'll do any one of those ads. Now, other people might look at me and be disgusted with me. I'm like, hey, it's what I do for a living. Yeah, you're a voice actor. If no one is going to change their vote because they use DC Douglas as the voiceover, and they're not saying, this voiceover brought to you by DC Douglas. Mm -hmm. It's just a voice. Yeah. It's what is being said. It's the images. It's all the other things. And also, if you're going to change your vote based on a commercial, you're an idiot, and there's nothing we can do about idiots. <laughs> I'm sorry. We can't. They're crazy people. I'm not so. sure what you mean, DC. Can you be more clear? So yeah. I'll do all of that. But now here's the thing. I'll do, I'll, so I'll do you a commercial for, uh, so, so, like, for obviously. Well, but you I'm, won't do anything. Everything. Well, no, no. There if if it's, if it's actively will. promoting racism or violence, mm -hmm. then then obviously I wouldn't do something like that. You know, yeah. those kinds of things. But that's you know. But if it's this debatable stuff, it's the stuff that's within the general public domain then of, of 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 debate that that is reasonable. Then yes, I'll do all of those. Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, the thing is, I'll take the money from the, this this conservative politician that I don't necessarily believe in, and then I'll use that money to uh, not have to work that week and instead make my own little tweaked nipple video about something. You know, yeah. and put that. <laughs> Out. And it helps support me do that. Or I'll use it and I'll donate it to Kiva.org. Not donate because it's actually a micro lending. Awesome place, Kiva.org. Um, or donate to an actual place that, you know, all sorts of things you can do. Yeah. You're taking the money from there and putting it somewhere yeah. else. A voice is going to do that commercial no matter what. Let it be my voice and let me take that money and put it to good use. That's all I think about in that regard. Um, so it, no, but it opened doors. I got more fans. I got more work out of it. Um, the Geico campaign, it turned out that it was just a small little internet campaign. So um, I only lost out on a, on a couple grand. Um, the the uh, advertising agency that was involved with all of that, yeah. you know, they, they, they understood what was happening. And they said, mm -hmm. we just, you know, they had to get out of the, the firing line. Yeah. And then, yeah. But then they had me back a year later when things were cool for another campaign. And I mean, Excellent. things, you know, so it's like the, the people that it mattered to for me, it, 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 it was fine. And, and, it inter and it introduced me to so many more cool people, so many nice mm -hmm. people that I met through uh, my fan page and all yeah. of that. So That's fantastic. Yeah. So, so it actually helped. I, I would say all in all, it definitely helped. Yeah. Yes. Now, yes. now, now, if you had it to do all over again, would you have done the same thing, or do you think you maybe would have played? No, wait a, a minute. Little if safer? I had it all over to do, like, mean before the phone call, like how yeah, far yeah, does the time should go back? Call. Yeah. Okay. Just before the phone. So call. it's just before the phone call. Would you well, have I was said something to, I was different? going off to, to see a movie, so I would have just left early. I mean, yeah. <laughs> would I have done it again, knowing that all this was going to come from it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it would have. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. because because I, I I have a higher profile because of it. Yeah. And it's what you do with that profile. Yeah. Um. And and I have and now, oh and here's the biggest thing that I forgot to say is that the freedom of me being able to go back to my blog and say okay you know what this is what here's I think what it is, yeah. yeah this yeah, is yeah. how I feel exactly. I can be fully myself and listen if that's going to cost me work if I have to shut up and not be honest about how I feel about something. In, in order to 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 make a little more money, yeah. it's like well then then what is my life about really? Yeah. Well, is, it, is, you, it, is it about greed I mean, or is it about living yeah. my life fully? I got one yeah, life, yeah. I die, and it's over. You gotta be. But that yes. is that is part of your brand, and uh, if the idea is that you need to be authentic to who you are, this is part of who you are. You yeah, are yeah. passionate and Absolutely. vocal and opinionated. But at and, the same time, you want me to you know, do a commercial that, that's that, that that's promoting or you know an Orwellian Republican thing or something? I'll be more than happy to yeah. give you. That are willing in voice. <laughs> <laughs> now, real quickly, a lot of these videos that you make, I've seen probably most of them, and they're funny as heck, I gotta say. Very creative. Um, very, very creative. 
So if somebody wanted to go to a place where they can see all of these, is there? A, you have a YouTube channel? YouTube channel. Well, it's That's a, some of it. actually all of it gets funneled right through my website. Do you like how that? Ooh. So they can find um, them all at DC Douglas. It's all at DC Douglas. That's the viral section. Um, okay. Uh, there's the, uh, playlists, and uh, so there's the producer section has a lot of my uh, older short films yeah. and things, and then there's a viral section, oh, and yeah. then there's you know, th and then it goes to earlier ones too that I've done. There's there's uh, all the way back to like one of my favorite, which is uh, how to comment on a YouTube video, uh, which came out of. <laughs> me <laughs> having to delete all these comments that were on my video from the tea party thing. And then I thought, oh, I'll leave them now. Um, oh, that's so funny. Did that yeah, it can get response. pretty cool. wicked. Yeah. Pretty so, wicked. So, so go check it out at dcdouglas.com and you guys will have a good laugh. Yeah. So you have a film, a short film. Yes. The Crooked Eye. Tell us more about it and it involves your mom, does it not? Yeah. She, um, uh, uh, she wrote a... Sh she's a among the things that she does, one of the things is she's she's a painter, artist, all this stuff. Uh, but she also writes, and mm. uh, she had written a short story. This is like way back in like '95, and I remember asking her if I could make a film about it, and she said, "Yeah," and like she <laughs> like believed I'd even do it. Yeah. Um, and I didn't get around to doing it for uh, uh, ten years. But then I mm. finally uh, realized I could. I had the funds to do it, and I thought well, I could do it on the cheap. I was gonna. <laughs> that turned out to be completely wrong, but. <laughs> Um, but I decided I was going to do it on green screen, and mm. that way I could just shoot uh, uh, the actors in a day or two. And uh, and then this friend was going to help me out with the, the, the graphics and stuff. Um, turned out the friend had his own issues, and so what was going to be a free service had to become a paid service, and then it turned out I had to hire four more people, and then a company, and then it became a major production. <laughs> so it's pretty cool, though. It's live people in a CGI environment. Mm -hmm. It's her short story. It's mainly a narrative um, with a voiceover. Um, which connects to VO Buzz Weekly. Uh, Linda Hunt does the narrating of it. Um, Love her. And, uh, and then I did it as a surprise for my mother, and she came out for the screening. I would lied to her and I said, I'm doing a short with Linda Hunt. you got to come see. It's called Oxygen. And uh, <laughs> so she's in, the, she's in the theater there, and I go up to the front, and I go, and then I go, so, Mom, you think you're here to see Oxygen, but actually you're here to see something very oh, different. Wow. And then I just let it roll. And so she's like going, what the hell is this? Until the title comes on, and she's like, oh, I wrote that. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Man. It was very she, cool. Was this uh, like an anniversary or a pro birthday or anything special? No, this was, I always just, wanted to, you know, I mean, because? it's a family of artists and yeah. uh, my sister's an artist as well. And, but, you know, we're, we're also gypsies and so we've been, we're, we're spread out across the, the land. Yeah. And so this was a neat way to have actually kind of worked on something with her, though, you know, mm -hmm. long distance and exactly. not realizing we were working on it. Yeah. So I mean, I yeah. adapted it and all that. That's really sweet. And uh, yeah, it's an that's cool. it came out really well. Do we um, have a... Uh, so I think we have oh, a little... Trailer? Like a trailer? Yeah. 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 Let's, let's, let's check it out. Let's look at it. The Crooked Eye. Sharon thinks for a moment. Now, wow. what's cool about that, that what's cool about cool. that is, her, is Linda Hunt's voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I, this was what's fascinating because you know, as a voice actor, I, yeah. I, I'm I'm used to directing actors, um, and uh, from way back, you know, I had I'd written plays and directed, and then also scene work when you're in classes. So mm -hmm. I've been on both sides that way, but I had never been on the other side as a director of voiceover. So this mm -hmm. is what was fascinating was, and this is also very intimidating. It's it's Linda Hunt. It's Academy yes. Award winner Linda yes. Hunt's coming in. Yeah. I'm going to direct her? I don't think so. I think I'm going to say, hi, just do what you want on the mic and we'll just... I trust you. Know. you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but what was fascinating was watching her work. First off, she's a sweet, wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up working with her again on NCIS uh, LA. But, um, and she remembered the film, thought it came out great and all that, which was nice. Oh, but the, the session was, she comes in and she goes into the booth there. I did it at uh, Buzzies. Yes. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And apparently that's like the word she just goes there to record. Yeah. And and he's like her engineer yeah. and that kind of a thing. 
And, uh, but her, the, her process is different. Um, so you have a line and you go in there. Like, so for instance, uh, most of us, uh, I would think, when we, we've got our narration, we will have read it and probably read it and read it and read it before we got into the booth so that when we get in there, we're going to give the performance and then just see what the director wants to take. So right. I go, you know, um, what mistake, uh, uh, would I like, do you feel your political life has hindered your career or do you feel it opened new doors? What do you think, director? That's how we would normally, you know, that kind right. of a thing. Mm -hmm. Well, with her, it's, do you feel that you, do you, do, do you feel that your political, do you feel that your political life has, hin do you feel your political life has hindered your career? Do you feel, <laughs> and it's like this process, <laughs> and then she's like, ah, do Got you it. feel that your political life has hindered your career, or do you feel it open new doors? And you're like, that was good. <laughs> okay. was that, like, so was it's that, a wild project. Apparently, did, James Earl Jones works the yeah, similar yeah, yeah. way. Yeah. Did she yeah. do that with every like with every line? It was through everyone. She like she right. would feel it. She like, and it wasn't like like a lot of false starts. I mean, she'd go through it, but then she'd go. But she immediately go back because she's like, "There's a better way to do it." Because she kind of knows what and she then wants she to do. Right. Yeah. And then we were through it, and I'm like, "I'm happy. I got my money's worth, baby." Yeah. Let's and go. she's like. She's like, no, let's go. She goes, we have time. Let's go again. <laughs> That's great. And yeah, it was it was a wonderful experience. So well, That's really I had so much yeah, good stuff to, to pull. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I know that that's something that you're really proud of. Yes, yeah. I yes. know that you are. Well, I think it's the best film I've ever done. Yeah. And it is yeah. and it, it is really cool. You guys got to check it out. They can check yeah. it out at crookedeye.com. The crookedeye.com. The crookedeye.com. Yeah. Um, you can get it on you, iTunes. You'll, you'll love it. It's really, really cool. Yeah. You guys did an awesome job Thank on that. Thank you. Absolutely. So if you were not a performer of any kind, what do you think you would do as a career? I'd be a gerbil. No, a I'm gerbil. sorry. What? <laughs> would you be a... <laughs> I, I expected a different question. Um... <laughs> No, if, I, if, I, if I didn't have a... If you were not a performer in any capacity, what do you think you would do? I, you know, I, gotta, I have to say, um, when I had a survival gig, I, 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 I edited actor demo reels and stuff for mm -hmm. many years. Um, and then I would also do edit my own films. But the editing is... A, that's a performance in a way, too. But editing is a lovely experience mm -hmm. because you can shape, you can save things. Like a, somebody, like a film that is like in bad shape, you can... I loved the idea of problem solving. That's what it is. I love problem solving. Mm -hmm. So even when I, I, had a, I was an accountant for a while, bookkeeper. You and were? Yeah, for oh. like, it was like three years. Wow. But like reconciling and then like where's that 32 cents? Yes. You find that 32 mm -hmm. cents and it is ecstasy. Wow. That is, that's like a shot of I know. I'm yes. out of here. I know. Forget about the 32 <laughs> cents here. I know. If my checkbook is not. <laughs> Just take it out of my paycheck. I have to yeah. be balanced to the penny or I will not sleep. It's Jeez. like I've got to find See? it. Yeah, but it's yeah. exciting. So you would have been an yeah. editor? Putting think, pieces together, yeah. Yeah, it's, well, but it was, again, it, the, but editing is, uh, it, it's a lot of problem solving, and I think Absolutely. it's the same thing with... And, um, and, but it's also creative. Yes, it's yes. Very creative. Right. Well, that's what I'm trying to say, is I think yeah. that there is a creativity with accounting as well, when you ha which seems antithetical to what accounting would be. But uh, Accountants across the world appreciate it, especially at this time of year, with the tax yes. season. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to the accountants. We need or CGI. creative accountants. I would love to be a CGI guy. A CGI guy. Ah, there you're yeah. really, because now you've got the computer, you've got a little mm -hmm. bit of the editing, but you also have the creation of some yeah. of a whole otherworldly thing. Mm -hmm. But all of that stuff is problem solving as well. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it would, be, it would be something with a computer. Yeah. Let's grab another uh, question from yes. one of your fans. All right. Fan um, question. Here's one. Because uh, Are we near the end? Should I ask this one? Uh, you can ask Go anything ahead. you want, man. We're right. anywhere we want to be. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the show never well, has to end. I think this is a really good one. Uh, this is from Dave Bisson, or Bison. Um, Bisson. <laughs> it's probably Bisson. <laughs> what are some mistakes you've made in your VO career? Stuff you would handle differently if you could do it all over again. Mm. And I th what I thought about this is what is, is actually this is a very simple answer. Is the mistake is, um, is believing no. Every time somebody says no to you or says you're not the right voice. Of all the... I remember... And I Love and I believed it. I believed to know. I, I submitted to uh, one of the big agencies in in in, in uh, Hollywood. I had my demo together, and uh, and and I had already been doing you know a lot of these other uh, uh, independent VO things. Yeah. And I knew that everyone and everyone was saying you've got a beautiful voice. But I mean, I, I had a talent. I was an actor. I was already working on TV. Um, so I sent the reel in, and this was to a guy that was an assistant at another agency I was with on camera wise. So I thought this is a, this is a shoe in. Mm -hmm. He knows me. He likes me, and whatever. I sent it in. And then he calls me, he's like, yeah, and he goes, well, I'm going to give you some advice for some classes or whatever. It was really not right for us right now. And I went, okay, and then I took down the information and all that. And then I thought, and I let it sit for a year. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, I'm like, what? 
I just sent it out again, and I sent it out again with the cover letter about breast implants. And I got my agent, uh-huh. who loved the reel and all of that. So what, is the, that, what does that show you? It's like, what, yeah. what was his deal? Mm-hmm. Either he, maybe he didn't like me, or maybe he, you know, it, he, his voice, his ear didn't hear the voice the way that mm-hmm. his did, or he, or Mark saw the potential that yeah. he couldn't see, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, or I'll, I'll add this, because this does happen a lot, mm-hmm. and I talk to agents all the time, and a lot of the times when an agent may say, no, I don't like it, or I don't need it, or maybe go do this, or try us back in a year, they just don't need that voice at right, that right, time. Right, right, right. That they had that category filled up, and mm-hmm. signing you would be doing you. Well, I'd just be justice. sitting on a shelf, exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah, which yeah. we don't want. So no. sometimes right. it works out for the best. No, but that thick yeah. skin, that thick skin it's, of you get knocked down, but you just get you know you just getting back up. Yeah. I mean, going, the thing is, is too. I, I would say is that is, for me, what made that one a little weird was the fact that, that he was giving me uh, it, to, the, go to, to go to class. To go to class. Like, mm-hmm. like, I think I'm pretty solid in what I'm doing right now. Yeah. But I, you have to be honest with yourself as well, as if, if you like, you know, people who send me an email going, how do I get into the business? And then they just record something at home and they go, okay, here's my reel. And then you, and then I say no, or you know, if I were an agent, I say no. And they're like going, well, I'm just going to keep sitting. Right. You have to have an awareness of your, of your instrument and where exactly. you are in your craft. Mm-hmm. And, and, and at that point I, I, I was, I was pretty clear about it. If I, I have a, I have a reel that I put together back in like 1989 that is hysterical <laughs> uh, on a cassette tape, and it's like, and I listened. I was like, I wouldn't take that guy. I wouldn't have <laughs> me either. Yeah, by the way, speaking of reels, your new demo that you put together, the whole video thing with the oh my sizzle reel, it people is on video amazing. Now, yeah. oh, thank you. It is so yeah. cool. When I, I saw that, yeah. I was like, that is really cool. Can they check that? They can see that on yeah, your site uh, too, if right? You go to, if you go to the website and you go to the voiceover, um, uh, the uh, voiceover actor side, it's the it's the first player of the demos. It's the sizzle vi- video sizzle that I have. Yeah, one. yeah. Probably it's one of the most great. creative demos I've ever, yeah. I've ever probably seen. Probably the most life. times I crashed Final Cut on my <laughs> computer. Yeah. Well, there you go. But it was very very cool. Check it out. You do a lot of the cons, man. You're the con man. What is it about? Doing going to these cons that you love. I mean, I think I have an idea of what it oh, is. Oh, but... the money. No, I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, actually, it does help. The free sharpies. Yeah. I gotta say, actually, I, I should have. Does, dressed... does it help to have a good booking agent? I, I, for yeah, that? Yes, and I happen yes. to be represented by Jeff Zanini of uh, Z- Zanini. Jeff Zanini. Management. Yeah, and he's mm-hmm. pretty. I hear he's yes. rocking. He's, he's the guy. Great. Right? He's, yeah, he's, he's awesome. He's the guy. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I hear also he also he reps a band. He is the guy. He is the guy. Uh, he reps a band called. Um, Rock Sugar? He rock does. Sugar. He actually, uh, Jeff is multi talented. <laughs> yes, he books he is. all of Rock Sugar shows. He does. And yeah. the guy's really, really great. Yes, so, he is. Yeah. But I wanted to say that th- I made that joke about the money thing, but I, I think I want to address it because I, I sometimes uh, hear online about how some fans are like, why do you need to get paid to come? You should be, mm-hmm. you know, you have fans and you should be grateful for that. And, and we are grateful. Uh, but the thing is, is um, as with any major city, the uh, cost of living is high, and we have to take every opportunity for work that we can get. So that when we have to take time off to go to a con, we need to be we have to get recompense for that, so that mm-hmm. we can make sure that we're still meeting our bills and all of that, and then we can still say hi to the fans. So it's and it's also work um, because. It's there's one of us and a lot of you guys there, and yeah. so there's there's a fair amount of work. Well, that and you, to do. But I mean, not only, as well. But not yeah. only that, the cool thing. Hold on, the cool thing is that there are a lot of uh, people in in your position that actually just say no, I don't want to do that. They don't want to be they around wanna, a bunch they of people. Don't like, so, right. so we know that you get paid for what you do in your time because you yeah. have to, like right. you just said. Yeah. But the cool thing about you actually doing it is that when you go, you're, you're, you 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 want to see. These guys are great. Yeah. You exactly. guys are awesome. Yeah. Exactly. No, but for Absolutely. example, and, and you can get all this at dcdouglas.com. But I mean, you are all over. I mean, you're Where's he in California. Be? You're in Orlando. Florida loves you, by the way. You're going to Florida a lot. I, Florida has been amazing. But they just, have a lot of cons. I don't know. What, there's something yeah, in Florida. But between March and July. I mean, you're going to Florida. You're yeah. going to you know Tampa, Orlando. You're going to Salt Lake City. You're going to Sacramento. You're going on tour. I mean, you're everywhere. <laughs> you're basically, he's but, basically a tour artist. But now. it's good. And there's there's I mean, people in South America that have been trying to get me to go get to a con in South America, which I'm I'm dying for because because Brazil. That's going to be longer than a weekend trip, my friend. Uh, the, Absolutely. Oh yeah. You might get oh, lost yeah. there. But the uh, but I got to say the, the, the <laughs> but the uh, South uh, South American fans of, of video games are are mm-hmm. phenomenal. They are like yeah. they are passionate yeah. about it. And yeah. then there's. Um, uh, there's uh, some fans in um, England or uh, so from one of those European places that have been trying to work on it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to go. I'm hoping that they can get me before the, my 
that game, the Resident Evil game. It's primarily yeah. Resident because Evil that's got a lot of them. Right. Yeah. But I mean, I, you I, are... I, mean, I hope they get me before. No, but before the game is like, ah, who cares about that game, that character anymore? It's like, no. No, but you're yeah. you're like the fourth actor to take yes. Albert Wesker, which and is a weird experience as a voice what actor. What is it like to step into? Because he was a pr very yeah, well, he was, he was, he was uh, the so. first one was Sergio Jones, who um, I, I, I would actually love to get in contact with. He did it, but he did it way back when, when the way they directed games was really bad, because it was all, it started with the coder mentality, yeah. and mm -hmm. it was like, here are the 47 lines, they're completely out of order, and just say them. Um, mm. And then now it's back. You've got yeah. people like Jenny McSwain. You've got like these yeah. people that direct it. Like it's this so is a theatrical. film. I mean, it yes, is. Exactly. Yes, it's beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, but he was the one for uh, Sergio Jones was the first one. Um, and then I believe uh, Richard Waugh was second. Peter Jessup came in for a couple, and then it went back to Richard Waugh. And this again mm -hmm. has to do with where they are production-wise, where they go. Right. And. Um, and then they decided to have it all come to LA, and then it was me, and then it's been me since uh, *Umbrella Chronicles* onward. Mm -hmm. um, and what I will say is that it's, it's it, what is strange is the when I did *Umbrella Chronicles*, they played Peter Jessup's voice because to 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 voice match. So mm. I was voice matching his version of the character, which was very unique. And then when they brought me back for *Resident Evil 5, I thought, well, I'll work more on that Peter Jessup voice. Who oh, Peter Jessup is an awesome guy, by the way. Um, and. Uh, uh, so I came back, and then they played Richard Waugh. I'm like, oh, I haven't been listening to that <laughs> one. Um, and then, of course, the character evolved, so I got to make mm -hmm. it my own as well, which was nice. Um, and uh, but I mean, these are other really wonderful. Uh, Richard Richard Waugh is an accomplished film TV actor mm -hmm. in Canada. Yeah. Uh, and but the fans do not like that kind of change. They like consistency, and I think video game companies are are learning that now. Hopefully, right, right. Um, for whoever has the role, that they kind of stay true to that voice actor because the fans now, this is a whole burgeoning, 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 bur burgeoning <laughs> field of voice actors being kind of uh, getting some sort of celebrity status. Yeah. And so right. the fans notice. And so the companies need to recognize the fans for noticing that and yeah. stay true to yeah. it as well. So, Absolutely. I think. Because that's cool, who's buying the game. Absolutely. Exactly. Man. I have a quick question for you Do you yeah. love doing voiceover? Yes. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to just wanted to hear that. Doesn't he sound like when he's talking about the stuff, you can Very feel excited. the excitement and he gets all yeah. excited. It's so, a, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a remarkable, cool. wonderful, no, wonderful, wonderful it's a, job. It's a great, yeah. great, great business. One more question from one of your fans. All right. Uh, like the oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is from. Ooh, can I say this one? Yosi Barroco Flores. Hi, Yosi. My <clears throat> so bear with me on this. Um, my teacher tells us. Yeah, he's a, um, a part of this question was that he's actually in school. Uh, one of his classes is uh, voice acting, mm. okay. Uh, okay. which is fascinating. Um, my teacher tells us one of the best things to do is to really get to know your voice. I don't understand how, how I go about doing that since my perspectives can differ from those I audition for. Um, do I just pick up some dialect tapes, sit in my room playing with different voices? Not sure how to go about this. Um, mm. It is actually kind of like a two-part question, so I'm going to address the, the second part It's actually part a really good question. There's a lot of yeah. people no, out there No, it's an excellent question. Th the, like that. Well, first off, I don't know, if you'll see if you're taking the class because it's to fulfill obligations uh, for uh, criteria for another class, or if you want to actually have a voiceover career. I'm going to assume you want to have a, a career. Um, the, the, the second part here about the dialect tapes and voices, all of that stuff can definitely help you, especially if you're looking at video games and cartoons and character voice work, then you, the way that you're going to define the voices that work in the range of your voice for all of these things is to play with these voices, is to mm -hmm. impersonate, you know, mimic the things that you hear around you, um, the cartoons and celebrities. Um, and working on dialect tapes is fantastic if you want to, uh, to, to get the accents going. Find out what works for you, by the way, in that, because some people find it easier to learn the accent uh, by, li by listening to someone who has the accent like celebrity or character, as opposed to listening to a, a tape that's just going to teach you the, the mechanics of it. Um, but all of that stuff is is important about knowing how your voice is in the morning, in the evening, um, what your what is easy for you, what sits with you, and what you have to stretch for. Um, so I, I would say that for that part, commercial stuff's a, a little different. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. actually have a good a lot of well, commercial you know, stuff. I've heard some coaches say about finding your voice because a lot of people say that. Well, you need to find your voice, yeah. and a lot of people are like. What does that mean? You mm -hmm. know, and I've heard it put in a few different ways. But one one way that I've heard it put that I, that I thought made a lot of sense is, okay, find your voice. It's just being comfortable with your voice. And mm -hmm. in order to, especially when it comes to voiceover, you're using your voice and you're manipulating it. You're doing the more you, the more control you have over what you can do. And so, so that if you want to do a character voice, you go, I'm going to do that character, voice, and you just go for it. The more comfortable you are doing that, the better you know your voice. Mm -hmm. 
So it's all about really knowing who you are and what your abilities are. If you don't really have any training or stuff like that, it's going to be really hard to find your voice because there's no real voice to find yet other than just a speaking voice, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But this is also why you're in the in the class and you're going to work with copy. But this is yeah. this is the thing I was talking about earlier when I was saying branding. Branding. And you want to, like, what are the three words to describe your voice? Well, you've got to find out what that is. You know, yeah. those three words are going to tell you, you, it goes both ways, but it's going to tell you what, you, what your voice is. It's also like an, an acting thing. For actors uh, going um, on stage or in front of the camera, you know, the, the, we start with not like, what's the character I can do? We start with who, who we are yeah. and trying yeah. to be just as natural as we are. So if I came on here to be DC Douglas and I, like I can do character stuff and all that, but I come on to be me. And, Hi, I'm DC Douglas, and I, it's like so artificial and so right. uncomfortable, yeah. and that's because I don't, I'm not comfortable with who I am, and once you're comfortable with who you are, you can you can just allow it to be, yeah, in front of the camera. It's the same thing with the voice. What is your normal talking voice, as you were saying? Exactly. What are the na normal qualities? What is what is it? Who is Yossi? And so yeah. Yossi starts talking, and then if you're going to talk, just talk to me, not read the lines and sound like you're reading sound like you're just talking to me and that comes with picking a person in your mind's eye that you're talking to making it personal exactly. and, and then all of a sudden you go oh that's who I am and Yossi actually happens to have a very abrasive annoying voice and so you become <laughs> Yossi ab uh, abusive abrasive annoying <laughs> dot com no, I'm totally kidding I don't know Not <laughs> but that is an image and that is a brand right I'm you just trying to undermine everybody I, I know I need to put DC on the spot right now DC Good. is full of great stuff <laughs> thank you to all of your fans for sending those questions yeah that's absolutely awesome. we really wrong. appreciate very, very it cool. thank you um, Mr. Douglas Y yeah. Please pick a number between 1 and 129. This is getting odd. 1 and 129. Wh one Just and 129? Just do it, DC. 1 and 129. I'm, I'm going to go for 111. He, he went bookkeeper there for a second, Jim. Yeah, totally. Okay. If you could have the personality of any TV character, whose would you adopt? Oh, I would be Alan Alda from MASH. <gasps> Oh, thank you. I love him. Notice it was not even a pause oh, for that, that one. Was sad, <laughs> man. It's like, oh. oh, absolutely. I'm gonna call you Hawkeye now. Oh, sadly, oh I grew gosh. up to be Donald Hollinger from That Girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh, that's so thank funny, Thank you man. so much for being hey, here. Hey, you know what, guys? Man? Thanks for taking the time and coming out and sharing it with us. This is lovely. We really, really appreciate you coming Wish down. Wish you all the best. Good stuff. I, I, I laugh. And I, you know what? I gotta say, I learned a little bit more about you, man. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I like him even more. Oh. I just finished doing VO Buzz Weekly. It's good for me. I hope it was good for you too. <laughs> And now I'm naked! No, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's what you get. Use that, baby. Well, that's all the time we have. We have to go. DC's got to get dressed. Leave it to DC to be the first one on VO Buzz Weekly to get naked, right? It's not a shock. Crazy. All right, you guys, take care. And just remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. We'll see you next time. And just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz. Wham!